everyone. Welcome to Machine Shop Tech Talk. I'm here with Ian Stork now. Ian is a creator that I've been following on LinkedIn for a long time and I finally reached out to to see what it would take to have a conversation and here we are. Welcome, Ian. Hey, Arthur. Nice to nice to see your face here on video and I'm I'm excited to be here. I know you've been interacting with my stuff for a while and we've talked quite a bit about video and all different stuff in the manufacturing world. So yeah, it's great to be face to face and we can have a chat here. How did you get started going into manufacturing? Because from what I understand, you don't have a traditional manufacturing background. Right. Yeah. So my extended family, well, with my dad, my dad's side of the family has a manufacturing business in the okay. U.S. It started in the mid 1900s uh, from oh, wow. an immigrant, my great uncle, who was an immigrant. And they started up up out of nothing and I was in school for video production film theater and then when I graduated you know looking around all all over for jobs and my dad's like you know we've always needed marketing they've always wanted video content they've always been interested in photo content you know and yeah. so I came in and we talked about what type of stuff they were looking for you know at the time it was mostly you know product videos demos of machines different technical overviews, more technical on that side, and then photos for websites, products, things like that. And so it was a manufacturing business and it specialized in a whole bunch of product lines. Now, this wasn't just like a one singular type of product they were making. It was just a whole slew of them. There were maybe six, seven divisions at the time doing all sorts of processes. And so when I started working there, it was, you know, just like jumping into it, jumping right into it. There was no background in manufacturing for me. And so it was a lot of learning. And through the time there, it was really cool because, I mean, dumping me right into it, especially with so many product lines, it just got me so well-versed in so many different aspects of it that, um, you know, just throughout the years, that's just been growing and compounding. That's awesome, man. I had no idea that you actually, that, that it all started with family. Yeah, so... yeah. It's, yeah, my dad's side... Um, he was, he came over, my dad came over in the 1980s and got his green card and he was, because he was a product specialist for, I believe it was Bushings, but it was, okay. it was something where there wasn't someone over here who was the specialist in it. And so that's why he yeah. was able to come over and, and keep working here. And yeah, so he was there for his whole, basically whole career. So is he retired now then? Yeah, he, he retired. Yeah. He retired. He's like 72 right now. He still oh, tries wow. to work. Okay. He still tries to work and do stuff. <laughs> um, so does my great uncle, who I think is a little over 90, still trying yeah. to work. Uh, you know, it's it's fun. You can't take the you can't take it out of them. <laughs> they got a lot to give. Um, so you started with the family shop. And then the one thing I'm curious, last year you went full time into the manufacturing space. Do I have that right? Yeah. So it was actually I went. I went full-time freelance in 2020 during okay. COVID. Uh, oh, okay. I left, yeah, I left where I was at and I just used what networking knowledge I had to try and connect with other manufacturers to mm -hmm. see if I had a portfolio that was worth them taking a look at using me for, you know, freelance help if, if they need someone extra in their marketing department, they need to bring somebody in for a project. And so I, I did freelancing for... Uh, quite a few years there, but then actually in 2023 is when I said, you know what, this is this is the gig, you know, this is yeah. what I'm doing. So I I set it up, LLC, official business, all that stuff, and so Stork Filmworks made it happen, and here I am. I learned a lot in that time, and so it's yeah. it's uh yeah it's this is the last year was really crazy awesome year, and so I got to fly so many places and do so much see so many different shops and machining processes it was it was awesome and so hopefully this year will be just as cool ha, has there been a change in the people you work with since you went full into stork filmworks or has it been the same group of people just in a different capacity what's that you know like? it's been yeah well when i went into stork filmworks it's been a lot more of me working directly with the clients rather than okay. working in partnership with like agencies and supplementing like different manufacturing marketing agencies and things like that it's been a lot of uh doing my own thing 
which which is cool as well. Um, but there are a couple people that I still I still work with every now and then, um, just because I, I've known them for a while and we still collaborate really well together. And I have that sort of creative freedom that they're like, listen, you're the guy for the video. We're gonna just roll with what you say because that's why we're bringing you in. And and I really appreciate that when I when I work with people like that. Uh, but yeah, no, the clientele's just been, you know, I've been mainly mainly with fabrication uh, in the last few yeah. years, working with the team over at Mazak Optonics, and then a little bit of CNC here and there, uh, contract manufacturing, different job shop type things, a lot of niche, a lot of niche ones I've been working on. And then lately it's just been a lot of automation, which is really okay. cool. And automation is definitely one of my favorites to capture. There's just so much going on and there's so many different, there's so many different things that integrate automation into their into their processes it doesn't have to actually be a manufacturing process to have automation you know in the facility in the shop in whatever you know whatever capacity they have it so that's really cool because then i get to see a lot more than just you know just the shop i get to see all these different all these different applications a lot of people automatically think just robots when you talk automation, but I'm sure you've seen all kinds of variations of automation outside of robotics itself. And yeah, I, I would say yeah, most, most most of it is heavily robotics, but then there's you know just a lot of automated processes when it comes to like packaging things, you know, um, yeah. conveyor systems, things like that, you know, where you're you've got a person putting the box on, but then it's going through all the processes and all the steps and comes out ready to ship. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of different, a lot of different things I catch. With all of that, Ian, what do you see makes the content creation so valuable to all these people you're working with? I mean, clearly there's a demand for it. Yeah. So what, how do you see it serving all this content? I mean, obviously it's beautiful. I love watching it, but yeah, <laughs> yeah it definitely, when it comes to social media and websites, like content is, is the thing and uh, you see it now with people who aren't even just businesses just people's personal brands creating content daily content you know get your face out in front of the world get your brand out in front of the world it's not only content that you are putting out and like businesses you're selling with the content but you're also creating this content to populate your pages whether it's seo whatever it draws people in with it if it's you know, you want to create some engaging things, both visually and uh, thematically, you know, to kind of capture people's attention in that way. And so I think yeah. a lot of the a lot of the stuff that I create, the, the video side of things, uh, I try to make sure that it's both entertaining and informative. And as I've moved away from, you know, the, the, the technical things, I really like to humanize these businesses through the through the content that I create. And so that's why I'm always big on like putting someone in front of the camera. You know, I, I want you talking about not just this machine cuts at this speed and does this amount of parts per minute and things like that, because if somebody really wants to know that, they'll ask for the technical data, they'll ask for that information if they're interested in making a purchase. But when they're learning more about the company and the product, there's a lot more that, you know, when you have a lot of companies you're comparing that are all providing very similar machines, very similar product, you know, it comes down to price, comes down to technical capacity of the machines, but also, you know, who do you want to work with? Who do you want to have a good relationship with? And so mm -hmm. a lot of the focus on some of the videos is, is just how, you know, like with case studies, a company can have a partnership with the person that they're supplying their machine to and how it can go both ways. And so, it's really cool when I get to go into these places and I hear about not only how a machine changed the company's business and how it put them on a path to success, but also like the two companies are helping each other out. They're solving each other's problems and that sort of like feedback loop of here, this is how it's helped me. This is how I think it could help me better. I would really love to see this. And both companies are growing in that regard. And so it's things like that that I think are, are really cool for me and I, I love to capture things like that, but I also think it's really important for prospective businesses and business partners to see that the companies that I'm presenting, 
when it comes to their values of what they value with working with their com- customers, they have a lot more that they offer and they're, they're looking for in those relationships. So I guess that's just a long-winded way of saying that I think the content's really important because I think it gives, yeah, you can write articles, you can have it written on your website, but with the visually engaging aspects of the video, you know, especially, you know, scrolling through your feed and you see a 15 second clip of this company, but you see somebody who's in a facility like yours, they're the same size manufacturer and they're talking about how this like changed their life. Like, I think that's really impactful. And plus when you, when you create the, the photo video content, like I do, you know, I can come to a company and I can do a two day session there, capture a ton of video, ton of photo, not only can it be used on the website, used in their social campaigns, but I mean, that's stuff that can be repurposed over and over and over in many different ways, recut into different pieces. And I mean, it's just immensely valuable if you're if you're really diving into being active on social media. And I think being active on social media is a necessity these days, too. So I, I just have to say that the content I create is it's, I think it's very, very important to all these businesses and to personal brands too. And I know something, this is something we agree on, um, yeah. is the importance there. And I love hearing your side of it because on my side, I'm a big believer in relationships throughout the supply chain, both above yeah. and below whatever, whoever you're working yeah. with. So when you're talking about you know the benefits of the video, being able to see that person, get a feel for that person, because with the the rapid rate that technology advances these mm-hmm. days, you've got to have some level of trust with the people that are in your supply chain. Yeah. And because you can't sit there verifying everything they do all the time. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know that person, if you don't have a good feel for who they are, or if you don't even know they exist and they're this rock star that's going to make a difference for your company... Like there's all kinds of reasons that the content you create, I think, has helped spread the like the awareness of the companies you work with, improve their customer base, that trust, and then really it's the it's the impact on like for me I focus more on machine shops. I know you're more on the fab side, but they're they're all on the I'm same on all, ecosystem. I'm on all sides, man. Yeah, and it's it's just there's just so much there that we can do for North America to. I mean, it all improves our profit, our baselines, everything else. And I, I definitely agree, man. It, I love seeing the content you put out and the repurposing. I know we've talked about that a little bit yeah. before this. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have like an ideal customer that you like to work with? I want to work with companies who have the drive to create the content mm-hmm. for other than just, uh, how do I, how do I put it? Um, <laughs> I like I like it when they also have a vision. Yeah. And okay. we work together. And that's a that's a really it's a really satisfying thing bouncing ideas off of people. I mean, somebody comes to me with with an idea uh very basic. I can, you know, throw out three, four, five different routes that we can take up production, whether or not and whether or not it's even worth doing a video on it. You know, maybe it's better suited for a different type of content, you know. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I really like it when when the companies they have this vision, and then I can work to help them hone it and put together a piece like that. My ideal video content is um, while while I love filming cool things, my yeah. ideal pieces are definitely uh, brand stories. You know, let's talk about culture. Let's talk about people. Let's talk about why we do what we do. That lets me yeah. sit down with these these people these that I interview. I do the interviews at almost every video I shoot, and I get to know them more and really dive into the questions. Uh, you know, I write up a, a list of questions, but as we talk, it just goes off the rails, and we just start chatting about all the different stuff we can. And that's when you get the really genuine answers that people, you know, people really want to hear and can totally relate to. And then the case studies. The case studies are a lot of fun because I just like visiting so many different places that if I'm with one company, you know, and I go do case studies at five different locations, I can check out five different facilities in five different states. And it's a lot of fun. And so, yeah, my ideal is uh, honestly is something like, you know, mid to large size manufacturer who's definitely already got the basis for their their social media they know what they want to do they know what they want to create they're already 
decently active, but they really just want to go go full force on on content creation. And yeah, I love those like multiple project, uh, multiple video projects over the course of a time period because then I get to know the company even better. And so each video I make is 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 better than the last. It feels like because as I get knowledge of the product it's it's easier and easier to go in and do one of these shoots and that's good for everybody you know it's very yeah. efficient and yeah very very satisfying i mean i can see you all lit up about it so I yeah don't think I, you just get me talking man there. i'll just talk about it for hours dude <laughs> that's why i never worry about when i'm on podcasts or, or guest speaking or anything it's it's yeah. so it's so easy we can fill up an hour i can just rattle on about why i enjoy doing what i do and maybe we can do something in the future on that because I love talking about this stuff too. Yeah. And um, yeah. So when you're talking about the ideal customer, they kind of have an idea of the video and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and everything like that is when you're trying to work with them on that vision. Is it is it always like within the gear set you already have? Has it ever had it been like, oh man, like I got to go buy a, a drone? I know you got the Mavic Two, I think. Uh, yeah, Air, the but Mavic Air like, 2. That's what I use. Yeah. Um, so when you when you're adding equipment, do you is it just because you're starting to get that demand from the customer base, or you're like, oh, if I have this, I could do X, Y, Z, like different features. You know, there's not a lot. I haven't hit a lot of roadblocks in terms of gear, which I'm really thankful about. Uh, I've mm. been able to. I think I'm getting pretty much the most I can out of my gear in almost all regards. Uh, I have scaled up a bit on what I'm using this year. I haven't used it yet, but I have some new things I'm really excited to try out and play with on shoots. Uh, so there's that. But no, I haven't actually hit any roadblocks yet. And I've always been, you know, I, I, I look at other people's work. I look at other people's work. And I, every, everybody, every everyone, even not in video, everyone looks at people who are just like them and seeing what they're using. With video people, yeah. we're always hitting each other up and messaging, you know, I can see a guy <laughs> who does manufacturing video. My first thought isn't, oh, he's a competitor. Oh my God. Like I, I have no ever inkling of that. I'm like, oh sweet. Another dude who knows what I'm talking about. Immediately yeah. message him, DM him, be like, dude, <laughs> love your stuff. I love the color profile you shot that on. I like your edit. Like and then it goes from there. And, and if it's like, oh, what camera are you shooting on? It's never like, what oh, camera is he shooting on? It's like, dude, what are you yeah. shooting on? Because that looks dope. And, you know, yeah. a lot of times I look at other people's stuff and I look like that. I'm like, man, like, I love I love how my videos look. But I always see, like, other people's stuff. Like, oh, I wish I could make them look a little bit like that. Oh, I kind of want to try something from his video, too. And and I think that's, um, not to sidetrack too much, but, but I think that's a really cool thing about content creators and especially, like, visual content creators, photographers, videography is uh, one, if you stop learning and stop trying new things, you're just going to stagnate. And part of being an artist yeah. is trying new things. So I think that's really cool uh, to look at other people's work and get inspired. I don't call it, you know, stealing. It's it's getting inspired. <laughs> Quentin yeah. Tarantino doesn't steal from every, every movie in history, but he is inspired by it. Well, maybe still yeah. sometimes, but he's good. So we'll let it, we'll let it slide. <laughs> but no, um, I always use that as an example. Um, but yeah, I see other people's stuff and sometimes it's like, oh, well, my gear's not really bottlenecking me, but I wish I could like kind of make it look a little more like this. And so there's times, you know, I've, I've considered really upgrading to, you know, full-fledged cinema rig setup. But I know that the things that come along with that is all new gear in every aspect you know i'm at the point where the next camera that i buy and upgrade to likely i'll have to get a new gimbal i'll have to get a new mm. you know what i mean like new tripod new all the new battery packs and you know you look at a you look at a piece of equipment that costs x amount of dollars just the accessories that you're going to need to get to go with that equipment is like three times that X value. So you're really looking at a hefty investment. And for me, I'm at the point where I'm still creating really high quality content with what I do. 
Nobody has complained about it. I'm probably the only one who has looked at it and said, oh, I, w I should get higher quality. Um, and yeah. so I think that I'm still providing really valuable, really valuable work with what I'm doing. So I'm probably the only yeah. one who's begging myself to get new gear, but that's just because I love getting new gear and playing around with it and trying yeah. new things. So yeah. uh, I'd say in the future, a cinema camera is probably in the future. Uh, maybe mm. not this year. As much as I'd like to get the FX3 for 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 a I can make that one work. The FX6, we'll see about that. We'll see about that one. Oh, for all you yeah. Sony people watching this, you yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. As a Sony guy, I, I know which yep. ones you're talking about. Yep. Um, I I keep drooling over what is it the A93, the global shutter that's coming yeah, out. Yeah, I think yep. It, yep. I, I've been looking at that and I'm like, okay, well, but like you said. It's the it's the ten thousand dollar camera plus the twenty thousand dollars worth of, the of gear you'll need. Yeah, yeah. I I want the yeah. S four. I want the A seven S four. I want them to come out with that. Yeah. They got to do it. Yeah, it's been be... or three. No, the three's been out for years. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. hybrid cameras because I do photography as well. So I love having two dedicated cameras that I can shoot with, and then two dedicated video cameras. So instead of getting four cameras or having extras. I like having my two. It's a good uh, good pairing to have. So let's say people in the space have been watching this video all the way through and they're like, okay, I love what Ian's talking about when it comes, how, how and they want to work with you. How would they reach out to you? What would be the best way? You know, the best way is, is find me on LinkedIn. Okay. Ian Stork on well, LinkedIn be... or yeah. go to my website, storkfilmworks.com. And email me there. There's a contact form or ian at storkfilmworks.com. I'm open to anything. I would love to talk. Even if you're not manufacturing and you're looking for video, let's talk. I would love to expand too. As much as I love manufacturing, yeah. automation, everything industrial, I think it would be cool to shoot stuff in like a foundry. I think it would be cool to shoot <laughs> stuff on a construction site. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to I wanna go film in a mine. Give me something yeah. crazy, you know? Like I'm I'm all about that like adventurous adventurous. Let's try something new. Yeah. You know, I'll keep filming your robots. I'll keep filming CNC. <laughs> I'll keep filming laser cutting cuz it's awesome. But yeah, let's go see some other stuff too. I'm always down. I'm always down like 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 I said earlier, learning new things. Yeah. You know, I feel it's, like I've really it's... hit my stride in manufacturing video. Drop me in a shop. Yeah. I'll know what to do. Maybe it's a challenge to try something different, different industry. So, hey, I'd love to expand and uh, learn more about all kinds of things. Content creation is a great place to stretch your legs when you love learning new things. It's, uh, yeah. What about you? So, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm taking over okay. now. All right. So, okay. so if you if you could film, because I know you, you like doing your videos. You're always talking to me about yeah. it. If you could yeah. try one other industry to film in, to film like a... A cool, I don't know, brand video, product overview, something. What would be an, a really interesting industry for you to check out? Film doesn't even have to be industrial related. Oh, that's a great question. I would have to say racing, something to do Ooh. with really, really fast cars. That I, would be really cool. Doing some sort of like sizzle reel for a racing team yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I think they're just all the 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 loud engines, the the burnt rubber. Yeah. The, the near misses, something like that. It brings me back to my childhood. Oh, yeah. Uh, I grew up around cars, so cool. yeah. that that would be really cool. That would be fun. That'd be a good, uh, there'd be a lot of opportunities for cool editing with something like that. I can expect, you know, yeah. fast paced, all the cuts with the, <laughs> you know, oh, that would be good. That'd be good. Yeah. That's cool, man. Oh, yeah. I'm... Like, like, great in tight clock. Like cockpit, I don't, I don't want to get too far into it, but like from oh, the cockpit, yeah. and then he shifts, and then boom, it zooms out. And now it's like a drone trailing him, and there's just oh, so yeah. many opportunities. Edit it like a like an Edgar Wright movie, like like Baby Driver, yes. something like that. Yeah, perfect. Or or a little bit John Wick. I mean, some of the editing oh, yeah. that's pretty. Oh pretty yeah, fast paced. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I appreciate that, Ian. And before we go. Um, is there anyone you want to give a shout out to or any questions you don't think we covered that you want to, to share on? Um, let me check real quick. In terms of manufacturing 
who should who should somebody follow on 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 social media? I mean, there's there's so many manufacturing influencers, and I'm sure most people were um most people are already following them, the ones that I follow. But you know, I'll just rattle off the 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 list. I mean, you've got Jay Call, Chris Lukey, uh, Drew Crow is doing really good stuff. He has blown up and is doing great things for the industry. Megan Zimba, um, getting women women showcased in the manufacturing world she's doing a lot for that um jake sanchez you've got uh jordan yates another woman in manufacturing who's doing a lot of really educational videos and stuff she's great uh yeah there's there's just there's an abundance and mm -hmm. um i just think everybody's worth following on there who's <laughs> you know you know the ones that are they're they're putting out consistent high quality educational content and they're not just doing it for themselves they're doing it for the industry they're in and i think that's that's really important too and changing the perspective of the industry that's another one of the things that i'm really hoping my my videos can do as well yeah it's and it, it, that brings me back in the conversation when you're talking about it's not about competition we're all here in yeah. the space to support manufacturing like you said to change that that there mm -hmm. like for me on my side it's all about bringing the awareness like when i do videos with like sambic Cormon, it's like look i want you to watch this video about a new tool that's out i want you to know in that eight minutes yes this tool makes sense no it doesn't make sense and then you're complete you don't sit there wondering there's yeah. some better option out there you mm -hmm. just you know in that eight minutes yep yeah, cool yeah that makes sense no it doesn't done <laughs> and that's that's a lot of what's possible out there with all the different areas same with building the relationships like oh does it make sense to work with that guy yeah that ian guy is really cool actually look at some of the stuff he's made let's get him in here or oh no i don't like the way he films or edits or whatever it's it's just this clear cut i mean i don't know anyone could not like your stuff man i'm not i'm not putting that out into the universe uh but it just it's that whole like vetting process and the yeah. fact that there's so many companies across north america to support yeah we actually need probably more content creators out there trying to lift uh, you, up the industry. You have no idea how many times <laughs> I have been like, listen, I either don't have the time or I'm not the right guy for you. Let me give you three or four other names of mm -hmm. manufacturing guys that I know who do video and they do great work. We are constantly, it is a constant thing of like, hey, I just talked with this person. They need some filming done. I'm going to be off somewhere else here dude go here's their email hit them up you know it's it's a lot of support it's a lot of support and that's really cool thank you so much ian i'm so glad when i reached out you said yes because like, yeah, there's course. always that initial reach out and you're like <sighs> oh yeah man i'm 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 open to whatever 100 percent